Hello, my name is Lauren Southern, reporting for The Rebel Media. And with me now, I have ex-Huffington Post contributor David Seaman here to talk to me about his termination from Huffington Post for the crime of bringing up Hillary's health. Hi, David. How are you doing? Uh, I haven't gotten much sleep. <laughs> I can um, imagine. <laughs> I've gotten about 35 messages, uh, direct messages, tweets, emails, uh, comments, and messages on YouTube, about 35 mm -hmm. of them. Uh, warning me very specifically not to be murdered by Hillary Clinton for her campaign, <laughs> which say. is a little stressful to have a bunch of strangers, a bunch of strangers giving you the life advice. Try not to get murdered over the last, the next 72 hours. Don't be the next Seth Rich. So yeah. I'm not in the best mood, but all things considered, I think uh, I think I'm fine. So <laughs> yes, I was going to say it's good to see uh, nothing in the news has come out about you committing suicide by bullet to the back of the head. So <laughs> that's good. Um, but a that lot has, does, I mean, these slippery bathtubs, you have to be careful. Of course, of course. Uh, but a lot has happened to you in the past 24 hours, and I'm sorry for what you've gone through. But I want to let you get the majority of this interview just talking about your experience. But first, I want to make sure viewers don't think you're just some crazy person making stuff up. So can you just give us a little bit about your history, who you've written for, just who you are? Sure, yeah. I'm a journalist and pundit. I used to do more cable TV than I do today. I used to be a guest on CNN shows. Uh, I was a guest on Fox News from time to time. I was actually on Neil Cavuto's show, excellent mm -hmm. business program. Uh, I've been a guest on a bunch of radio shows as a regular. I used to go on Coast to Coast AM quite often to talk about Bitcoin and uh, surveillance. Those were really my main topics in the media was Bitcoin and cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and some gold stuff. I was mostly interested in just fair money and, and giving people an alternative to the Federal Reserve. Uh, so that was my beat. And then and surveillance stuff was the other beat of the right. NSA story. I was covering that pretty closely. And some of the... Uh, uh, sorry, I've been getting nonstop invites for random things. No problem. Uh, and some of the, uh, the other stuff I was covering is related to the drone program and related to police surveillance. But overall, it's been a civil liberties and a money message. And that, those have been the things that I'm interested in covering. Right. So I'm not like some crazy right. protester out there, you know, <laughs> pretty moderate guy. And this was very surprising for me to get a message from a friend. Hey, dude, your articles are gone. What do you mean they're gone? Well, <laughs> like, what is that. this? You what were, kind of world is this? You were previously writing for the Huffington Post, and then you uploaded a video last night saying that you had two articles randomly deleted and your publishing access had been taken away from the site. Can you explain what those articles were about and why you think they were removed and broked publishing access? Yeah, sure. So for people who don't know, uh, there are different levels of trust at the Huffington Post. And this is similar to uh, some other national publications that I've written for before, where once you gain access to the backstage area, to the publishing platform, uh, they can either give you instant publish, where as long as the grammar is good and you're within certain you know editorial guidelines, you can actually take it live and it'll go right up on Google News and go right into their main distribution. And that's what happened with one of the uh, Hillary Clinton health stories. And it was so popular with their own readers that it shot right to the top of their list of most read stories. I think it was number three right on the homepage when they pulled it. And so I was getting messages from people because people were clicking on it and just coming across you know, a 404 uh, story not found page. Uh, and so they were asking me what's up if I had deleted it. And no, this is what they did without my permission, without even giving me notice. And at this moment in time, as we're talking now, uh, you know, Monday morning, nobody at Huffington Post has explained this, this uh, censorship to me, why I'm not allowed to discuss Hillary Clinton's health, why I'm not allowed to link out to a video that discusses Hillary Clinton's health. That certainly was not in the agreement I signed with them. There was not, no language in there saying I can't talk about Hillary Clinton's health. And as a presidential nominee, I thought it would be relevant to link to a video discussing her health uh, done by somebody else, done by Paul Joseph Watson. Uh, and I thought it was newsworthy because it's already been viewed 3.5 million times over the course of, like, what, uh, three weeks or so. Uh, so I thought it was extremely newsworthy and just buzzworthy and put up a couple posts linking to it. And to, to think that my access would be revoked, uh, it, it's just slimy. It's just exactly not is where there America anything should else? be right now. Is there anything else this possibly could have been for? Or like, have you've had no one contact you? Do you expect them to contact you? This is just so strange. 
No, as people can see on my public timeline, I've engaged with Ariana Huffington, but she has not replied to me. Uh, right. This is extremely unusual. Again, I've written a lot of stuff for them. And as I was saying, there are different trust levels. So I was on the instant publish level and they took that away. And now it's just nothing when I log in. It's just, there's no ability to publish. Do you think uh, that, and, sorry, just one quick question. Do you think that Huffington Post could possibly have been contacted by the Clinton campaign to do this or the DNC? Or do you think this was someone within HuffPost that has a personal bias that removed your article and revoked your access? I don't want to speculate there, Lauren, because I have absolutely no way of knowing that. Uh, but either right. way, it's troubling to me because it impacts my ability to to get the truth out to the public. And it's concerning because, you know, maybe if this happened to a journalist who is less of a, you know, less of a video whore like I am on YouTube, the word might not have gotten out. And it would have been very easy for them in a day or two to just release some statement that I had been dropped because of inappropriate coverage or something. It would have been very easy for them to do that and for me to have no leg to stand on. But having a large YouTube audience, I was able to tell people what had really happened. And uh, it's concerning because I think that when somebody goes to Huffington Post or AOL, there's a reasonable expectation that what you're looking at is just commentary and just news, that they aren't actively deleting certain topics and censoring certain topics uh, from the public. Right. You said there had been no kind of rule that said you couldn't write about Hillary Clinton, but was there a bit of an unspoken rule? I mean, a lot of people talk about HuffPost being quite biased in favor of Clinton over Trump. Do you think there was kind of a personal unspoken rule not to attack Hillary? Absolutely not. Uh, and there was no, uh, there was no direction in that area. And, you know, when you work in media for long enough, as I'm sure you know, too, you have conversations with people that are off the record and various organizations and media companies have a way of letting you know what it is that they find to be appropriate and not appropriate. And there were no concerns with my previous coverage of Donald Trump. There are no previous concerns with any of my coverage. They loved it, uh, which is why they made me a contributor in the first place, because they liked my YouTube channel. Uh, so it's very disconcerting. And it makes me wonder, is it this topic in particular? Is it Hillary's health? Is this something they're trying to keep under wraps somehow? Uh, the only reason I think that is that Dr. Drew has been in broadcasting for forever, and I have not looked at his most recent ratings on his HLN show, but to be dropped just days after he speculated about the state of Hillary's health on a radio show strikes me as vindictive and is like a kind of uh, information control, like, oh, we'll show you, we'll get rid of your show. He's had his show there for six years, mm -hmm. I believe. Well, in my opinion, she does look quite ill. I don't think it's crazy to suggest there might be something up and to ask for her health records, like people asked for John McCain's and other politicians in the past. It's this very strange, I've gotten so many tweets saying, you're crazy, this is a conspiracy, don't even touch it. Do you think this is a crazy, paranoid conspiracy? And do other people at HuffPost and mainstream media have an unspoken bias to not talk about it because of that? No, I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's necessarily false, and I don't think it's necessarily a conspiracy theory. I think there's some meat here. And uh, again, it wasn't my own reporting. I was just linking out to a popular right. video that had gone viral and that had gotten more than 3.5 million views. And that particular video, which is still up on YouTube, uh, has actual footage of Hillary Clinton being circled by some reporters who are asking her uh, you know, questions at the same time, which is apparently a trigger for seizures. I don't know that much about <laughs> seizures, I'm not a doctor, but what she does at that moment in time is clearly not normal. And I would suggest to people who watch that video that if you feel that she was just joking around with the reporters, then maybe it's not a physical problem, maybe she's suffering from a kind of mental illness because mm -hmm. what she did is just totally not an appropriate reaction uh, to the questions that were posed to her. To have her head jerk up and down like that and her eyes flip back and forth is totally not normal. And then she tries to dismiss it. If you watch the whole clip that is sourced from, she actually tries to dismiss it by saying to the reporter that it must be the chai she's drinking. She holds up her chai and uh, recommends the chai. And the reporter says something glib like, oh, I, I had the chai. You know, like in other words, like, yeah. I'm sure it's not the chai that caused this, right? Like chai doesn't cause one's head to flip up and down uncontrollably. And when you look at the larger picture of images of Secret Service agents helping her up the stairs and her needing a step stool to get into a relatively low 
to the ground SUV. When you add all these things together as a researcher and journalist, yes, you start to think that something's there. And if you don't think that something's there, you have to ask yourself how much of that is confirmation bias because you don't want to see something. In my case, I don't particularly like or dislike Hillary Clinton. I've never been close to her particular campaign or to her foundation. So when I look at it, I just see the facts and I see a woman who might be quite unhealthy, but more importantly, I see some kind of media platform or some kind of group of media companies that is uncomfortable with discussing this mm -hmm. uh, at the level of depth that is required in a presidential election. Well, yeah, there's tons of questions there. The catheter, everything. And these are very legitimate. Are we voting Hillary Clinton or are we voting for Tim Kaine? <laughs> like, that's the real well, that, question. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> Even if you like Hillary Clinton a lot, if she gets in there and three months later, she's too incapacitated to run the country, it's going to be Tim Kaine, a guy who is vocally anti-medical marijuana, a guy who just doesn't have a very impressive leadership record so far. Maybe in the future, he'll prove himself to be good. But nobody's voting for Tim Kaine. They're voting for Hillary Clinton. So that's an excellent point that you bring up. Mm -hmm. Now, you've spoken a bit about having to post and how you haven't seen much control. But what do you think about other public, other uh, sites like CNN? What do you think about their coverage of Hillary's health? Do you think that there's people have accused them of having ins with the DNC and the Clinton campaign? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I've accused them of having ins with the uh, DNC. Uh, one of the articles I put up on Huffington Post recently that interestingly they did not delete, which I thought was more controversial than the one mm -hmm. simply linking to the Hillary Health video. Uh, the one I put up about the WikiLeaks DNC leak is still up there, and there's an email where you have DNC staffers. Uh, I should read the apologize apologies for my typing right here. I just want no to read the actual quote, and then you can see how bad it is and how incriminating it is. And in my post on Huffington Post about this, here's the, the title if people want to Google it, WikiLeaks revealed massive political corruption. Where's the coverage? So that was my headline. And there's mm -hmm. an email in there that I linked to. And uh, the email from a DNC staffer says, quote, window closing on this. Need to know ASAP if we want to offer Jake Tapper questions to ask us. Uh, I'll repeat that last bit. If we want to offer Jake Tapper questions to ask us. Now, now, Jake Tapper is one of the anchors at CNN. And typically in journalism, you don't run an interview by giving the host the questions that you would like to be asked in advance. Right. Certainly when you, when you reached out to interview me today, uh, I didn't say, OK, here are the five questions that I need you to ask me. And I need you to ask them slowly because they've got to be the perfect softball pitches. Yeah. right? You're just asking whatever you want. Uh, so that to me is a troubling uh, level of closeness that sh just should not exist between major cable media and the DNC, period. Absolutely. And if it were the RNC doing it, I'd say the same damn thing. Absolutely. Now, speaking of WikiLeaks, uh, you've brought up in your video that you kind of made your video last night as protection against a possible disappearance of yourself, like you've had other people that have talked about uh, Hillary and her problems and her emails. Uh, what would you say to people who think you're a bit crazy for making that, to people who think you're being paranoid for uh, making that insurance video for your life, quite frankly? I think at this point in time, knowing everything that most of us know, uh, to not be a little paranoid is actually to be uninformed because there's a lot at stake in this election. And on the Democratic side in support of Hillary, we have to remember that round one was weeding out all of the Bernie Sanders people. And that was also what these DNC leaks showed is that he really never had a fighting chance, right? And the media is not covering that because it would outrage a lot of younger voters and they would not want to support Hillary Clinton knowing that Bernie Sanders did not really lose fair and square. He lost by design. So uh, that's in there. Uh, and um, yeah, I, it's the, I, I think that at this point in time, it's not so much the Seth Rich story that bothered me, nor even all the people messaging me saying I'm going to be murdered by Hillary's you know, goons or whatever. What really bothered me was a story a couple years back uh, when I was living in Los Angeles, uh, Michael Hastings, a journalist who had done a lot of really good work for Rolling Stone, he was on The Young Turks all the time. Uh, he was kind of like a smarter, more disciplined version of me. Uh, he died in a car crash, brand new car, extremely suspicious conditions that to this day I don't feel have been adequately uh, addressed or explained away. 
And he was very close to disclosing a story. I won't say what that story is, in my opinion, uh, but it's a story that has since come out anyways. And I've, I, it's my personal belief. I can't prove this, but it's fairly well sourced. It's my personal belief that he may have been killed uh, to prevent right. the disclosure of that story. Right. Well, I've always said, if you uh, think there's absolutely nothing going on that we don't know about, you're just as crazy as the people who think that the entire government are lizard people. They're on the same levels of well, crazy. If, if, a healthy skepticism sorry, is important. Sorry to cut you off there. If the NSA <laughs> and the CIA aren't doing anything fun, where's all that money going? They're yeah. getting a lot of money, and they have a lot of employees. And I don't worry about the CIA going after me or any of my peers. What I worry about is kind of the rogue political consultant uh, who might see me as a threat to the Clinton campaign, and they want to make sure that they become the secretary of whatever when she wins, would they potentially pay somebody to harm a journalist like me? I don't know. So that's mm -hmm. why I made the video. Now, with all the bias going on and uh, the establishment control going unchecked, what can people do to combat this and make sure that the media is in check and doing proper journalism? What would you suggest for voters and people that are worried about this? You got to keep speaking up. It's part of what being an American is about, is you don't stand by silently while you see wrongdoing. It can be wrongdoing at home with our own government, or it can be a concentration camp uh, in World War II. The American way is when you see wrongdoing, you stand up and you say something, and then you work on a solution to that wrongdoing. So uh, I think that's what everybody needs to do. And it used to sound cliche as can be a couple of years ago when I'd go on shows and say, we are the media, you know, we have to, we have to get the word out ourselves. But at this point in time, mathematically speaking, we actually are the media. Mm -hmm. uh, Midday viewership of MSNBC and CNN is as low as 150,000 people watching concurrently. Uh, for contrast, there are 318 million Americans and uh, that video I linked to, the Paul Watson video, has been viewed 3.5 million times in less than one month. So 3.5 million versus 150,000 people barely watching uh, while they're walking by a TV at the airport. Uh, we are the media now. So if you have a Twitter account, reshare important content, get the word out. I think there are a lot of people who genuinely don't know what's going on, genuinely don't know the level of media bias uh, occurring in this election. Absolutely, and that's why I wanted to have you on today. And thank you so much for coming on. I do need to wrap this interview up here, but are there any other points that you want to add? And also, could you please let us know where people can keep up with your updates and follow your content? Yeah, nothing else to add. I wish I had you know better stuff to share with you, but I'm still kind of be bewildered, right? Because I didn't do anything wrong. No, mm -hmm. no curse words in the pieces, uh, grammatically fine not offensive to any minorities or individuals or institutions, uh, not a legally actionable problem for Huffington Post to deal with. You can't be sued by Hillary Clinton for linking out to a video uh, that shows her being interviewed by people and then her head bobbing up and down uh, furiously. You can't be sued for that. Uh, so yeah, I'll leave it there. Um, to stay in touch, I have the YouTube channel. It's just my name. If you search in the YouTube bar for David Seaman, it should pop right up. And of course, uh, davidseaman.com too. Excellent. And I believe your Twitter is, can you just give that for, to us? Yeah, my Twitter is uh, D underscore Seaman, S-E-A-M-A-N. Excellent. And I will be uh, watching for updates to see if Huffington Post gives an explanation because they do need to answer for uh, this for sure. And people will be watching curiously. Thank you so much for coming on, David. Have an excellent ev evening and please stay safe and keep us posted. Yeah, thank you, and thank you for covering this. Thanks for watching. Don't miss my show Standoff by clicking here to become a member.